Hey man, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. This is uh, this new thing that I'm trying to do as, uh, as we had this conversation before. Yeah. It's called Man in the Arena. And as you know, you know we, we had this conversation. It's essentially trying to sort of break down and really look at the, the man behind, you know, all the success, all the, you know, acclaim, you know. You, Are you, you sure had. you have the right man? Yeah, I definitely <laughs> do. I definitely do. And, and okay. I guess that's a great way to go into sort of introducing you, you know, um, uh, Jude Addo, um, banker, author, investor, board member, um, father, yes. right? Very proud father. Yeah. Yes. Christian. Indeed. Good, good. So, 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 what I want to do is basically go beyond all the, all of those. We're gonna to touch on some of those, um, uh, I guess, labels, mm-hmm. and then break down, you know, what those things mean to you, but also in a way that allows you to um, help. Because there, I feel like there are a lot of young men, right, who uh, are trying to live up to this image these right. days, right. Whereas, you know, I think we, we would be a lot better if we actually take the time to learn the other side, you know, mm. the, the, what people call the softer side, which right. I actually think for me is the braver side. It's actually the harder thing to do. You know, it's easy to have all these accolades and things like that, but the harder side is to be vulnerable, right? Yeah. So, so, so I guess we'll, we'll go into those things, but I wanted to start with um, how we met, mm. right? Way back when, feels like forever ago, uh, Ghana International School, you That's know, right. so I came into what they call the big school, which mm. is uh, secondary school at the time. Yes. And you were in lower sixth, right? Yes. At I the time. So, yes. yes, yes. And um, uh, you then became, and, and you know, you became entertainment prefect. I remember this. Oh, don't yeah. go there now. Oh, yeah, no, we're, we're going there. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I remember actually... At the time, it was, uh, I guess, interesting for me coming in and, and yes. you know, for any young person, you come in and you look up to everyone that's, you know, uh, in, in, in sixth form. Mm. And I have I just want to say that I've never stopped looking up to you from that time, you wow. know, and, and that's why that's you're, you're my first guest, you know, today. That's kind. And, and it's, it's, it's sort of a, a full circle moment for me. So I just want to thank you as well for for making the time. Absolutely. I, I actually do remember you in Form 1. Uh, <laughs> scrawny little kid. <laughs> still scrawny. No, still no, no. Scrawny. You, you put on a few pounds now. <laughs> um, but I think the next time we reconnected properly was actually in Uganda, if you remember. Yes, yes, I remember. Yeah. I remember. Do you remember the story about the, the, the um, what do you call them? Uh, the, the, they're, not, they're not clips. They're sort of these uh, little um, plastic things that you put in your shirt so it makes sure that the, the, the oh, collar... Oh, yes, 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 Do you yes, remember that? Yes, yes. Do you remember that? Yeah, the collar stiffeners. Yeah, 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 yeah so, yeah, so yeah. we basically um, <laughs> spent, what, like a few hours driving around because we're, we're in, we're in Munyonyo at the time, which yes. is this sort of vast... Uh, hotel resort yes and it was yes. the commonwealth uh, youth, youth um, ministers meeting or something yes like yes that. exactly was giving a speech there yeah exactly 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 and, and i was um, frantic because i forgot my collar stiffness in London. yes yes exactly yeah, yeah. and and at the time i didn't know what they were i'm not gonna lie to you, you, you <laughs> I was like, yeah. where can i find these things here and you're like <laughs> looking at me blank like, well, <laughs> like what, what is, is that, that? <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 literally we we spent i think what happened in the end how did we find them i we, actually don't know if we did did we I think I don't we, we went into this place and uh, the woman was like, oh, I think we can help you with that. But I think in the end, you improvised. I must have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, yeah. Ma- I'm a master at that. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. so, so, I mean, you know, well, that's, that's, that's sort of how we reconnected. And then, um, but, but before, before all of that, I, you know, that's when you were speaking at a conference. But, but before that, you, so you went to Bryant. Um, yes. Uh, really University, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, did a year at UCL. Not quite a year, it was a semester. Ah, right, okay, okay, a semester. And then uh, where I want to start sort of the conversation from, and, and this is going to be sort of the first part of the conversation, which yeah. is, you know, your journey to where you are now, right? So you were JP for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, how many years? Four and a half. Four and a half, <coughs> okay. And, and what was that time like? And, and, and what, do you, what do you remember most about that period in your life and, and getting into JP, you know, for... for uh, most people, that's quite the accomplishment straight out of uh, university. 
Yeah, for me, I thought I had made it. I, I thought, <laughs> yo, look, mama, I made it. I'm in JP Morgan. You know, I had a bit of a misconception around, uh, you know, how earning potential because uh, I looked into the whole investment banking arena at mm -hmm. the time where my sister, mm -hmm. and this was pre-credit crunch, pre-financial crisis, so bonuses were crazy. Yeah. I saw her, <laughs> you know, living large, and I thought... I want a piece That's of what that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I get into JP. I, I get an internship, and they read out um, the the HR person reads out my uh, salary just for the um, the the summer internship to to me over the phone. And because of this preconception I have in my mind, I filter it out completely wrong. Yeah. She says, "You know, you're gonna be you're gonna earn thirty thousand pounds or something like that." I was like, "Wow, for three months! <laughs> oh my goodness! Like this is really the industry I should be in." <laughs> And then she's like, no, it's pro rata. <laughs> so it's it, it, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah, wow, yeah. okay. So it's not that much. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not that much. Yeah. And, but you know, I it was JP Morgan is really a period of um self self discovery for me right. because um I, I actually started uh, my role uh with it, I actually started JP Morgan in, in the technology department. So I was Oh right, I, was, I didn't I was, know that. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people don't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I was, I didn't I was know that. building software for the traders. Okay. Um but I was sort of like a business analyst um translating um what the business required into very technical mm -hmm. stuff for the for the coders to build. Mm -hmm. Um and then at, at some point I realized look I I I had quite I had the gift of the gab. I was pretty good in front of uh, of, of of people. I was right. a pretty good sales Right. So I thought, actually, you know what? If I'm not gonna love this, uh, then I'm not gonna be the best at it. And my competitive streak in me—if mm -hmm. I was gonna do anything, I had to be the best at it. Right. Right. So I had to navigate myself out of technology into the front office, you know, as a as a, as a banker. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, effectively had to devise a plan um, and to get there. Yeah, and it, okay. it was so, actually very unusual to so, do that. So, so okay, <laughs> so this is one of the things that, like, I really want to come out here is. How do you go about doing things like that? Because not everyone knows, and I have conversations, you do as well. You have yeah. conversations with a lot of young people who are going into these um, huge companies. How do you create a lane for yourself or, or brand yourself in a way or connect with the right people, you know, to make that sort of shift and, and go into a new lane? It's a really good question. I think um, I, I can only speak for myself and how I was able to do it. I think a, a lot of it came down to finding what I was truly passionate about right. and not necessarily uh, jumping on any bandwagon um, <clears throat> as, as it pertains to what was particularly sexy at the time. Because right. what was really sexy was being an M&A banker. Okay. Um, and I mean, I think if I really tried to, to, to go hard at it, I probably could have done it, but I, I had absolutely no, no passion for it. Uh, what I was truly passionate about was Africa and was about economic empowerment. It was about sure. um, catalyzing growth on the continent. So I effectively became that sort of evangelist within JP Morgan. Yeah. I kept talking about it um, and found myself in the right rooms, um, speaking to the right people who took mm -hmm. notice of me mm -hmm. and effectively navigated my way out of back office technology to middle office, uh, a risk market risk function, and then eventually to the front office covering wow, okay. Um, okay. Uh, clients. And, and again, I wasn't even in an Africa-focused role, um, but I think that carving that niche for myself effectively drew a bit of attention to my skill set. And that takes time, obviously. It takes time. Yeah, it, it takes time and patience. It and takes and, a lot and, you of know, patience. As you know, I'm not particularly good with the patience side, side of things. But I, don't, I don't think anyone's particularly good at it. You right. just have to do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. Right, right, yeah. of course. No, no yeah. one is brilliant at being patient. patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It just takes a bit of self self discipline. Yeah. So, so again, so that's 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 uh, really useful. But taking it a step further, yeah. so you so you carve this niche for yourself. You start making a name for yourself at JP. Then you become, I want to say, the youngest director at Standard Chartered. But mm. let's be. Uh, I guess yeah. more. Uh, I didn't see everyone's safe. passport or birth certificate. Right. So I, let's I let's be safer and say one of the <coughs> youngest. But I want to say the youngest, right? Yeah. Um, director at, at the Standard Chartered. Yeah. And you essentially described this role to me in the past as a dream role for you at the time. Absolutely. Because you you were a director of what was it um, wealth management um, at the time? Yeah, I was in the wealth management department in yeah. Ghana. So, right. Right. Um, which is obviously where you're from. Yeah. You know, where where 
pretty much at the time where 70% of my family was. Right, right. Where right. my aging parents were. So, <clears throat> I mean, it was, it was hugely beneficial for two reasons. Number one was I got paid to build a network in my country. Right. Um, right. Which was in- incredible. But, yeah. but beyond that, I'm I'm very very family oriented person, and I was very I was getting increasingly conscious about my, you know my aging parents, and I'm I'm stuck in London, the other way in Accra. Um, how about finding a role that allows me to go see them every now yeah. and again? So it was yeah. a perfect role. I was traveling to Ghana every six weeks, wow. had a chance to see them. And it's quite interesting because literally two and a half years to three years into the role, my father passed away. So it was wow. sort of like okay. a full circle moment where I was like actually the the longing I was feeling. Um, to find a role, um, selfishly a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, that would take me home and allow me to always touch base with my parents. Actually, was 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 very very helpful to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and in in that time, did it feel like it was almost uh, a sort of divine intervention? You taking that role, and and I just want want you to basically think about how you know your faith and all of that ties into you know the decisions that you make in your life, and how how did how do you do you pray about these things or does it kind of, you know, um, feel right to you? It's a good question. I think it's a bit of both. I am definitely a man of prayer. So prayer is definitely a part of my daily routine yeah. and it's something and it, with, 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 with big decisions like that, especially taking on a new role. Um, it's certainly something that, um, I prayed into, but I just get, a, I, there's this itch I get within myself when I, when I, when I know it's time for a change. Right. And right. um, until I, I scratch it, the, the itch doesn't go away. Yeah. And I think nine out, nine out of ten times it's, it's proved to be true. Yeah, the, the right yeah. And 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 I mean, one <coughs> one thing about this the this show, you know, the, the whole man in the arena thing is about, you know, when when you're in the arena, when you're doing all these things, taking these risks, doing things that are a little bit unconventional. Right. It's about blocking out the noise. Mm. Right. It's you know, and and w- one thing I really want to know from all of this is. When you went from carving a niche for yourself at JP to being director at, at, at Standard Chartered, but then taking even more of a risk in, in going on your own and yes. essentially, essentially setting up your own shop, right? There were people obviously saying, Jude, you're crazy. Oh, I've had that every step of the way. When yeah, I left exactly. J- when I left JP to Standard Chartered and I joined Standard Chartered literally on my first day, Standard, Standard Chartered employees were like, wait, you left JP and came here? <laughs> like, what yeah. is wrong with you? Right, right. But you knew why. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was it was accretive to the long-term goal. Um, I've always been sort of mission-focused, mission-driven, and I, I, I tend to prioritize things that are mission-critical and, right. tr- and sort of block out the noise. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, even when I decided to hand in my resignation uh, and leave Standard Chartered, another friend said to me, goodness, Jude, I, I mean, jobs that people's parents are fasting and praying for. <laughs> are the ones that you're... Uh, <laughs> you don't want to... You, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 and, it, it, you know, these are fair criticisms to make, yeah. right? Because yeah. on paper, it looks like you're insane. Yeah. Um, no, I, I mean, I can, I can relate. And I think, you know, we've had many conversations about my career, you know, and... and yeah. I approached you because I could learn from that, yeah. you know, sort of thinking where, in spite of what everyone says, you know where you want to get to. And, mm-hmm. and that's a very lonely journey at, at times, right? So lonely. You know, so I remember when I, when I quit the UN, this was, uh, you, remember, you know, you yeah, remember this? Yeah, that's right. Um, <clears throat> this was, what, 2018. Bear in mind, I come from a family where my, my dad mm-hmm. spent decades at the UN. My yeah. uncle spent d- decades at the UN. Um, and, and generally we're a sort of civil service, mm. public service type family, right? Mm. And everyone thought, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, and, and bear in mind, uh, it was a year and a half in. Mm. I was 24 Four. at the time. Sounds about right. Right? No one does that, right? Mm. You know, so um, I really resonated with your story because it was like, no, he knows why he's doing this. And, and, and he's doing it. For a reason, because the the goal is much bigger than yeah. the the average person sort of you know can can relate to. Because most people are saying, "Let me go into JP, let me climb the ladder, let yeah. me you know," um, but that's not always. Uh, it's not for everyone. Absolutely, and I think you know you've hit the nail on the head. It, it comes down to knowing what your path is and yeah. being true to it. Um, 
I think being an entrepreneur and and doing your own thing is, a, is, is especially now is heavily romanticized. Yeah, right? yeah, of course. It's it's, yeah. it's it's a really really difficult path. One of my uh, very good um, sort of uh, friends said, you know, being an entrepreneur is like giving birth through your nose, right? <laughs> uh, I've your never nostrils. heard that one before. And she's a, she's a female, so she right, can say that. Right, 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 right. right, right. I, I mean, right. But it's 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 so true. It's it's, it's an almost an impossible journey, and yeah. it's only it's only possible until it's done. You know, and um, so I, I really respect those who, you know, whether you, you're an intrapreneur, yeah. i.e. you stay within the corporate and you know that's your path and you're doing it very well, you're beasting it, or right. you're an entre- entrepreneur, yeah. just do what 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 is true to you, to you, you, know, yeah. you, to, you to your purpose, to your path. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and obviously, you know, you're sitting here now partly because of the old history we have, but also because it, it worked, it played out. Right, like the way yeah. the, the the way you sort of envisioned it, right? Like you know, um, that's kind. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I mean, well, well, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. You know, again, uh, you're currently sitting on the board of World Vision. True. Right. Correct. You're you, you again, like I mentioned, you have your own shops, not mm. shop, but mm. shops, mm. Cornerstone Partners. Um, you know, uh, JA Group, um, and you, you. I think Cornerstone is now two entities. Yes, Cornerstone has. Um, been uh, a very inspirational story um, right. if I'm if I may say so myself and you know it's not it's not really down to me I'm, I'm just one of six co-founders and one of 20 partners but <clears throat> that has gone from literally a 30,000 pound pot at the very beginning to uh, you know deploying over 1.4 million of you know essentially proprietary capital right um, across 20 partners and now um, has dovetailed into uh, a, a, a fully fledged VC fund um, right. m- managing several millions um, right. on behalf of institutional investors. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, and you couldn't yeah. have done that if you stayed at JP, could you? <laughs> well, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Um, I would have been quite distracted. Right. Um, but um, somebody else potentially could. It sure. just wasn't my. Sure. My path. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And, and and that's the thing. It's not your path. And yeah. and, and that's that's a key thing to remember. So. I mean, so that's that's your career. That's if people go on your website, yeah, they'll they'll, they'll see this stuff, right? So I want to take a turn sure. to to some of the things that make you you, you know, the things that because um, because a lot of people Don't can go have talk this. About high school and rap. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm, I'm not going to talk about how you used to be an up and coming rapper. I'm not going to mention that. <laughs> right, cool. I just did, but I'm not going to mention that. What I, what I want to talk about actually is one of the things that. Um, I admire you for is because I I know this, especially from the conversations we used to have, you know, COVID during lockdown and things like that. Mm-hmm. But but you know we we've had many conversations. But I remember so vividly one of the times where we had a video call, right? And your family is such is at the core of who you are, right? Mm-hmm. And and I'll let you talk a little bit about that and and what family means to you, and then I'll ask you sort of I'll go into more specific questions about that. Yeah, it's. I mean, <clears throat> I've. I don't remember a time where I haven't been a family person. I mean, right. from the family I was born into to the family I have inherited mm-hmm. um, uh, by way of marriage. It's 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 core to to who I am, and I've I'm, I've been blessed with a wonderful wife and two wonderful daughters. Mm-hmm. Um, and <clears throat> you know, if uh, there's any party and I can't bring my my family along, I don't want to be there. Right. right. So, yeah, it's they're they're really really important to me. Yeah. So 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 let's let's take the the part of that that happened first. So okay. marriage, right? Okay. And I remember asking you about, um, cause, you know, obviously I'm I'm single, right? I I'm 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 not married, but beyond that. I'm single, single in the sense that I'm I'm not dating at the moment. Right. And I remember asking you about what it's like to be married and and have um, a, a partner that you want to build with. You mm-hmm. know, because people get married at different get married at different stages, right? Yeah. And and you, I still remember this. You told me sometimes it's ninety ten, mm. and sometimes it's you know sort of thirty seventy. Sometimes yeah. you know, it's, and, it's hardly ever fifty fifty. Right. And 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 I still remember that to this day. And I, I want you to just go into what you sort of meant about that, and and specifically as a man within that, what that means for you. Yeah, um, 
Look, it, 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 it really means that um, this sort of uh, idea <clears throat> um, that you, when you get married to someone, you, you know, you bring in 50, the other, other person brings in 50, it's never been my reality. Right. And I think it's never been, or it's not based on so, some of the conversations I've had with a lot of married couples, mm -hmm. it's, it's probably not a reality for anyone. Right. Um, for a true partnership to work, um, we all go through seasons in life and mm -hmm. sometimes one person needs to put in 90, the other person needs, because <clears throat> the other person can only put in 10. Yeah. Um, and I'm not just, I'm not actually even talking financially, I'm just talking about in terms of energy, in terms of effort, in terms of, um, you know, just helping around domestics. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, I, you know, when my wife and I, we try to study our love languages, and for me, one of my primary love languages is acts of service. Right. And so, it's a, it's a language that I, turn, I tend to speak. So, mm -hmm. You find that, uh, and and that's why when you come over to my house, you find me mostly doing a lot of you know helping around, taking out the trash, right. doing the dishes, right? Because um, and that's, that's your way of showing that that's my you know you you care and and and, and also help around the house, and and that's something that I've noticed about you, and 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 that sort of translates to you as a father. I feel as mm -hmm. well. Um, first of all, talk about your. Yeah, this, this is what most parents, you know, look forward to. We just talk about your, your, your daughters and what that, you know, Man, those, meant to you at the time. I mean, those girls are absolutely indomitable. Mm. They are indomitable right. by definition. Um, incredible, incredible girls, full of compassion, full of love. Um, and the great thing about it is that they have a great relationship with, with each other, even yeah. at such a young age. Um, the older one is extremely protective of, of the younger one. <laughs> and the younger one is a typical se second born, you know, always trying to pick on the older one. The older one, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful dynamic, um, and it's, it's lovely to watch. And I, I, I've been told, look, you, you really only have... 18 solid years with them before right. they go off and yeah, start yeah. doing their own yeah. thing. So. so you're trying to enjoy that. So yeah, I'm yeah. trying to enjoy that. I think COVID, yeah. in a sense, as tragic as it's been, it's been a blessing because being able to stay at home and, mm. and you know, be with the girls while working. I mean, they've joined some conference calls, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, 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 been a, it's, been a, it's been a real blessing. And, and so before, before COVID, um, you were a lot busier, you used to travel a lot more yes. and things like that. Was it ever sort of um, a, a, a sort of pain point within you that you were like, oh, I wish I could spend more? Th did it ever occur to you or was it sort of after COVID that you were like, well, actually, you know, it's a good thing sort of retrospectively? No, actually, during the period, I, I felt it was a bit of a relief because while I was uh, standard chartered before I had actually quit off and, and gone, gone to do my own thing, mm -hmm. The travel was getting a bit excessive. Right. I was literally on the road maybe every four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a young family at the time. Of course. Um, so it, it, it wasn't ideal. Mm -hmm. um, so actually COVID, um, not COVID itself, yeah. but the associated lockdown lockdowns and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, came as a bit of a relief. A relief, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And, and did becoming a father change you in any way? Um, you know, n not necessarily in terms of lifestyle or whatever but your outlook on the world your your ability to um see certain issues maybe different and also not just being a father but being a father to daughters right like yeah. you have two sort of young girls in your house yeah i would say yes yeah um <laughs> i would say yes it, it it changed me number one i mean it, it sort of buttressed the priorities i already had which was um, family, 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 yeah. and um, essentially, my in, in in all my decision making now is always filtered against what does this mean for my wife and kids. Right. Um, so th that effectively changes everything. Mm -hmm. uh, if every decision, every major decision you're going to make, is, it has that filter. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from that, I wouldn't I wouldn't really say that it, it changed my personality, it changed my it, has, it hasn't really had an impact on on, on any on any of those things. Right, yeah. and and I I can attest to that because I I think knowing you as long as I've known you, I have mm. I have never really seen a shift through it all. You seem very, you know, even keeled and and, yeah. and sort of you know. Um, but I I wonder so so for most people, 
um, that managed to stay even keeled. There's a lot that they're actually <laughs> <laughs> sort of keeping Lado, within. Are you a therapist? <laughs> I don't feel like you were going I, there. No, no. I mean, I mean, for, honestly, because for, for me. I feel like these are the conversations that we we sometimes shy away from, right? It's yeah. it's sort of, are you able to look? And I know you do, right? Yeah, right? Like look within you and realize that. Well, actually, you know, there's certain things that I I keep bottled up, right? Yes. Is 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 there anything that you can point to that's a particular sort of you know looking back, you're like, oh well, if I if I actually if I'm honest with myself, you know, I could have been a little bit more this, or I could have been a little bit more that, or yeah. Um, there's definitely, you know, I mean, yeah, you, you definitely have that, those moments of introspection where you're like, actually, I'm just, you know, bottling in so much stress, uh, mm -hmm. so much because, uh, you know, I, I tend to be someone who, because I'm, I'm also a, a pastor in, in practice, right? right? I, I don't have the title or. Um, I'm not a licensed reverend, right. but I, I run a fellowship and I used to actually pastor a, a, a young adult church oh, because right, I'm okay. that guy that okay. tends to receive, be on the receiving end of other people's problems and how to help them yes. solve it. I've never really been the one to go to anyone with my problems. Exactly. Yeah. As much as I have incredible, uh, an incredible support system, Lord Hastings, my wife, right. you know, my, um, uh, my, 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 my best friend, Alphonse, I, I have an incredible support system. I can, start, I can pretty much talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. But because of that predisposition I have of always being the listening ear, right. I find it very hard to, you know, a identify when I'm going through a period of you know intense stress, mm -hmm. and B do something about it by, about it. Yeah, by yeah, going to yeah. speak to someone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, th th there's been those moments, and you're right about that. You know, someone in my position would would tend to have uh, periods where you know things just boil over. Right. Know? But I've always found comfort in scripture. I, I open up the scriptures and find a way. Uh, and, and God always helps me out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's never been a time that He's let me down. Um, and and secondly, you know, if all else fails, you know, just open up FIFA and you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, smash yeah. a few people online. Right, right, right. And right. That always makes you feel better. You still play FIFA today? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe good, once good. a month. Right, right. Once I mean, month, you know, no, yeah. no time, but yeah. Once a month, I'll I'll smash someone. So yeah, if you want to get smashed, let me know. I, I actually <laughs> haven't played in a long time, so I definitely will get smashed, honestly. <laughs> but um, so so okay, so. Uh, I, there was a, there was a point you you know you made a great point about the support system, right? Yes. So within that support system, even though you're talking to these people, do you still feel the need to be a, a little bit less sort of forthcoming with your problems? Because because I'm saying this because I do this, right? Right. So for example, I'll come to people with very specific aspects of what I'm truly going through mm. because you never really want to let someone all the way in, yeah. right? Is that something that you do? And and if you do, you know, you know why necessarily? Yeah, you're getting personal. Now. <laughs> um, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe I haven't really had. I haven't done that level of introspection yet. It, right. it probably is, and my wife will probably say yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he definitely does that. And ne next time, I, I think we, we might ask to have her. <laughs> yeah, have her here. But yeah, um, yeah I probably do that. Um, but you know, when you know, every time I, I speak to my support system mm -hmm. and have <clears throat> that, there's always a moment of clarity. There's right. always that sort of release of tension mm -hmm. that. Um, I'm like, why didn't I do this earlier? Yeah, you know. So, yeah. definitely, my recommendation to anyone is, if you're ever going through anything, you know, definitely speak to someone. Yeah. Mental health is incredibly important. And, and 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 has that sort of snowballed into you being more forthcoming and more sort of um, able to to have these conversations and things like that over I think, time? I think or? I think I'm, I'm I'm more able to have these conversations. Yeah, I still yeah. don't rush into them. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's the short answer to your question. Okay. Now, yeah. now I, I want us to look forward a little bit, right? Okay. Like, so in the next 10, 15, 20 years, um, what are some of the main things that you want to accomplish? You know, you've, you've, you've basically lived two lifetimes you know in, in my view right like you, you've done you've had the whole corporate career and done really well with that now you set up your shop that's doing 
you know, really well. You know, you have all these. Yeah, I I would say it's doing really well. Uh, um, And and you have all these other, you know, being a pastor, being a board member, and all these things. You've written a book, right? Two books. Two books. Two books. Exactly. So, um, what are your books called, by the way? First one is called Crossroads. Uh, It's about my journey to Christianity. Right. The second book is called uh, Good Things Happen in Glasgow, and it's because that's where I met my wife. Ah, uh, right. Okay. So, so, so talk about talk about both books and 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 why you chose to write them. It was really by inspiration. So the first book, um, literally, it had been on my heart to. Um, write about my journey um, and literally someone some random guy came up to me on the train and says you know about that book you're meant to write yeah you better write it that's how random it was I had never seen wow. it in my life and literally the next day I put pen to paper and words started coming and I haven't been sort of uh, in that space where you you know you put pen to paper and you experience the write, writer's block yeah no such thing it just happened. kept coming it just kept coming and within, amazing within a, probably within Within a month and a half or so, I, I finished the manuscript and then it was published within... Like, a month and a half? Yeah, it was pretty insane. Jeez. Um, and then the second book was a pretty similar story, but, um, you know, it, 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 um, it focuses... It, it's not a typical rom-com. It's, it's, it's not like that, but it, right. it uses my experience meeting my wife, who's Nigerian, who's from a who was from a Catholic sort of background. Me being a Protestant from right. a Protestant, we use that as the backdrop to talk about certain um, social, political, religious right. Uh, right. issues right. in Africa right. uh, and how to deal and how, how to deal to with, deal with yeah, it. Okay, yeah, no, so that's 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 fantastic, and so. When you were when when you were writing those books, and when you spent time sort of thinking about the themes of of, of these books that you want to put out there, is there a particular sort of uh, you know, also going back to the question that I had about going into the future? What are some of the themes that you want to really sort of double click on as you go forward? I know obviously there's certain things that will always be a part of you, like your faith, your family, and so on. But are there any other? sort of themes that you think these these are things that I want to delve into more that I want to sort of build on it's a good question um, I'm still figuring it out it's crazy um, I definitely don't have all the answers I'm, I'm literally every day I'm, I'm trying to figure it all out but mm-hmm. I think one thing I really want to center on uh, and uh, delve deeper into is um, how to um, liberate Africa from the tyranny of neo-colonialism. Right. Um, but more importantly, um, not just uh, liberation, because freedom to what? Right, right. Um, <clears throat> I, I really think, and this, this, this is effectively my life's work, how do we imperialize the wealth of nations in Africa? Right. That's, that's really... So, so, so that's going to be your focus. And, and I think that's another thing that we've talked about a lot and, yeah. and sort of, you know, tried to um, even sort of question, ask the why yeah. of the why of the why, right? <coughs> yeah. and, and, you know, so going forward, I think one of the things that you've talked about wanting to do more of is be more involved and on the ground, you know, in, in, in Ghana mm. and, and Africa m- more broadly. Is there anything sort of concrete that you, you're working on at the moment or any ideas that you have that you want to sort of um, push more on in the future on that? Yeah, um, so I'm, I, I, I think we're working on a few things and I'll just say watch the space. Yeah. Um, at the moment, JA Group & Co., mm-hmm. uh, which is effectively the investment hold call that um, does a bunch of different things on the continent mm-hmm. uh, by way of investments. That's that's pretty much what, what we are focusing on. That's the vehicle by which you know we're we're going to um, accomplish some of these things and some of these objectives. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll just say yeah, probably okay. watch, watch the space. Uh, we'll cool. see how it goes. All right, and 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 just to wrap up, right? Okay, um, just a few quick quick fire questions. Okay. Yes or no? Goodness. Yeah. No. 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 Don't worry. <laughs> um, uh, There's always a bit of nuance to stuff, but okay. No, I mean, if you want to add, if you want to add, yeah, if you want to add nuance, you please do. Okay. Um, but but I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly, and this is gonna be fairly simple questions. Politics in the future, yes or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not answering that. Right yeah. Now. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, secondly, um, will you write another book in the future? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Uh, third. Um, have you enjoyed fatherhood so much that you want to have another 
<laughs> Come on. <laughs> These are very unfair questions. <laughs> My wife is probably listening thinking, hey, what's he going to say? Yeah, well, I mean, if it, honestly, it's, it's, it's more because I'm trying to understand what it is that you will be doing over the next 10 years. So, so if someone wants to sort of follow your journey yeah. and follow your story, yeah. um, it's sort of like plotting on a, on, on a graph. So what, what are some of the main things that Jude will be up to over the next 10 it's years? A, it's a good question. And the, yeah. the reason I can't answer it because with some of these things, I also enjoy the element of surprise. For sure. Uh, and so uh, I, I, want, I want to see how it pans out. I'm not, I'm not wedded to a particular direction on them. Absolutely. Um, I always say be stubborn about your goals, but flexible about the methods. And so Say that again? Be stubborn about your goals, but flexible about the methods. Methods, okay. So Good. we'll see how we'll see how it goes with these things. Yeah, um, sure, sure. Yeah. Last one, and is a lot less sort of intrusive. Um, do you feel that you have accomplished a lot of the goals that you had when you were, let's say, eighteen? I'll say I, I, I wanted to retire by 25. <laughs> that I, I said I wanted to retire by 25, but that hasn't happened, <laughs> clearly. So I wouldn't say I have But you strike me as someone who wouldn't retire even if you had... That is true. Exactly. That is true. So, so, so what would it take for you to retire? What would it take? Yeah. I'll, I'll, or, or is that also you want to leave that sort of open? Personally, I think it would... It would be very, you're right, it would be very difficult for me, someone like me, yeah. to retire. Yeah. What I genu genuinely want to see is the average person who's born into the average family anywhere on the continent feeling and knowing that they have an, a fair shot to make it in life. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I think the two ways to do that are <clears throat> politics Yeah. and investments and, and, and finance and wealth creation and i think sure. on the politics front we'll see who 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 takes up that charge but I, i'm in that domain where I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 focusing on entrepreneurship financing investments and god being my help i'm, I'm seeing what, what 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 contribution i can make in that in that in that domain essentially cool thanks man i really appreciate it thanks for having you, me you know i really enjoyed this and it went by like a breeze but you know, again, looking forward to catching up, you know, properly, you know, in the future. And also, good luck with absolutely everything. I mean, the whole spectrum of everything that we've talked about today. If anyone that I know can pull all of these things off and make it look like it's easy, <laughs> it's it's definitely... Because it definitely looks easy to all of us. You Goodness know, all of us me. that are watching, you know, it looks I, I'm easy. Not, I'm not doing something right there. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely looks easy. But but I know, you know, as as we've grown closer, I know that it's never as easy as it looks and yeah. and you know keep fighting the good fight and honestly uh, it's an inspiration to, to to what you do what you do so thank you likewise thank you very much Marcus. cheers cheers